Live Worldwide, your inside look into combat sports. Ring Talk Live Worldwide is brought to you by the World Boxing Council, the WBC. And now the host of the longest running fight show in radio and internet history. I rolled with him. I know what an idiot this guy is. Pedro Fernandez. Hey, Pedro, how you doing? And good evening to everybody out there listening to the show. Damas y caballeros, bienvenidos, ladies and gentlemen. Eminent, coming at you from the multi-million dollar sports final studios in San Francisco. Check it. This is Ring Talk Live Worldwide. Often imitated, but never duplicated. Get this. Come up four years, four decades of radio come September 2024. So obviously, I think I know what I'm doing. Maybe you don't. Straight up, who am I? My name is Pedro Fernandez. I'm your ever so modest host. And of course, when I say modest, think caps. I'm a four-time Golden Glove champion, was ranked nationally, and, and, and I'm an award-winning boxing writer. So I bring a unique combination of that. So straight up, you want to hit me up on the Twitter? You got anything to say about boxing? You can't. The uh, Twitter address is not average page. That's not average page with X or not average page with Twitter.com. Straight up, bottom line is this is Ring Talk Live Worldwide. You're inside looking the world of boxing and MMA. Of course, we'll get into the Frito Bandito. I'm talking about Canelo Alvarez, of course, the 168 pound world champion at one point in time. He was the pound for pound king of boxing, of course, still the king of Mexico. But the bottom line is, yeah, no, he's had three optional fights in a row. The first fight with Bivol got holes punched in him. Of course, after that, he went 12 rounds with John Ryder and 12 rounds with. Uh, one of the Charlo brothers, and of course, neither of those guys presented a threat. So the bottom line is, he's had three great, three free fights in a row. He doesn't deserve a fourth or a fifth. The WBC said this week that now David Benavides <clears throat> is the interim, but in the meantime, David Benavides is stepping up to 175. They're going to have a, a vacant 175-pound interim title bout with a Russian guy that attributed him barely beat. Bottom line is, I'm telling you, this whole thing about David Benavides and Canelo Alvarez is confusing. It hurts the mind. We'll talk about that. Of course, the Wow, go back to 1995, we're talking about Nigel Benn and Gerald McCullen, and, and 1997, the greatest heavyweight fight of all time. No, I'm not talking about Lee and Frazier. That was in the 70s. I'm talking about Ike Bilbucci and David Tua. Straight up, you are tuned to Ring Talk Live Worldwide on Sports Byline, IR Radio, Sirius XM Satellite Radio. Take it away, gifted one. <laughs> Now, more of Ring Talk with Pedro Fernandez. The face of truth is open. The eyes of truth are bright. The lips of truth are ever closed. The head of truth is upright. The breast of truth stands forward. The gaze of truth is straight. Truth has neither fear nor doubt. Truth has patience to wait. The words of truth are touching. The voice of truth is deep. The law of truth is simple. All you sow, you reap. The soul of truth is flaming, the heart of truth is warm, the mind of truth is clear and firm through rain and storm. Facts are only its shadow, truth stands above all sin, great be the battle of life, truth in the end shall win. The image of truth is the cross, wisdom's message is its rod, the sign of truth is Christ, and the soul of truth is God. Life of truth is eternal, immortal is its past. Power of truth shall endure. Truth shall hold to the last. That's the last of it. As eloquent a speaker as Muhammad Ali was, boxing silenced him. Think about that. CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. You are tuned to Ring Talk Live Worldwide. Fight I'm looking forward to, and I'll talk about a little later. It is a battle of women. I think these two chicks can both fight. I'll talk about chicks. CNS is Estrada, 25. No, that's right, chicks. I can say that. Of course, 30 and 2 is uh, her opponent, Yocasta Valley, who's 30 and 2 with nine knockouts. So they got nine knockouts each. So the women can punch a little bit. I think they can both fight a little bit. This is 105 pounds. Very light. I think they should wear like six or four ounce gloves, but obviously they're going to wear eight. So that's going to happen on the 29th. I think that's underneath. Tim Zhu and uh, Raleigh Romero. Uh, the, um, of course, that's on that card, I believe. We'll get some more on that later with Tommy D. Take that back. Let's go to Tommy D right now. Tommy D, how the heck are you? I'm good, Ray Pedro. How are you doing? Doing all right. Well, you know, I, I went out on a date last night. You know, I went to a dog show. <laughs> okay. And she won. Your date? Yeah. <laughs> It took you that long, man. It took you that long, man. I, wait, hey, did you drink last night or what? 
I did you, did you drink last night? Come on, man. You should be sympathetic for a poor guy nah. like me. She'd be sympathizing <laughs> with me. She'd be sympathetic. She just couldn't believe your ears. I know, I know. Anyway, bottom line is, um, last night, of course, um, not the hottest boxing weekend of all time, without a doubt. It's just not. But if you look back in time, boxing has its down times and its up times. But last week, um, I still have to go back to that, that Oshaki Foster fight with um, – I mean, I thought that he won clearly. Abraham you Nova? thought that he won clearly, but believe it or not, there are people that thought it was a draw, and some people thought the other guy, the, the other guy, won. So um, I, I got to give him some props there. So I, I was dogging him really bad, but the bottom line is, some people give him a shot there. Anyway, um, we have upcoming fights, of course, the eighth uh, in Saudi Arabia. I'm talking about the heavyweight encounter, Francis Ngannou, and of course, in and uh, Anthony Joshua. People feather, favored Joshua big time there, but they favored. Uh, Tyson Fury big time as well and Tyson Fury got dropped on his ass uh, that's true but um, I mean a couple of things I mean Tyson Fury you know he, he's he, we don't know his lifestyle outside of the ring is a little bit shaky and, you know known to you know be abuse, abusive to his body uh, well, I won't get any further with that I think you know what I'm talking about you know what, bro? We're going to redial you right now because that, that Skype connection is really bad. We're going to redial you. We'll connect with Tommy D in just a second. Of course, uh, coming up, the second of the uh, uh, shows on Amazon Prime looks like Javante Tank Davis will be fighting Frank Martin. Frank Martin's like 18 and zip, but Martin's like got – Martin needed a knockdown, I think, in his last fight to win the 12-round fight. Bottom line is he's not that much of a fighter in my mind. Of course, Javante Davis coming off the ruin over Ryan Garcia last April, a big money fight. Of course, both those guys made – millions and millions of dollars but 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 before that he was it was three and a half months i think he fought hector garcia before that and now he's been off a long time so it's been a year that gervonta davis went off of course he's had his issues he changed his name i haven't got his next second name now so when i get his name down i will say it on the air when i get it right anyway but the bottom line is of course he hasn't fought since april and of course he's had those issues coming outside the ring with uh both the um domestic violence issues i think in some so he had, you know, he's had some issues with the cops. But the bottom line is he seems to have cleaned his slate, and he's ready to go. I believe it will be in April or March. Bottom line is to go back to the line and bring in Tommy D. Tommy D, you there? Yes, I'm here. Sorry about that. That's all right. No, it isn't safety. you. That's Skype, man. It's Skype. Every once in a while, yeah. Skype goes down on you. Anyway, Ryan and Haney, they're going to kick it off in New York City on Tuesday? Yeah, the press conference is in the Palladium here in Times Square. Um, I guess they're going to officially announce that it's going to be in the bar plays, which is a big surprise. We think these are two West Coast guys. You thought they'd no. you know, be in Vegas or in California, but they're fighting in New York City in the Barclays in Brooklyn. You know why? Because New York is the capital of boxing. Las Vegas took over as the capital of boxing in the 70s and maybe the 80s and 90s because of the fact that big money was going there. But still, the mecca of boxing is Madison Square Garden. Of course, in the Madison Square Garden, you know, is not going to be used for this one. In fact, I hear they're trying to knock down the garden and get the Knicks to play like in New Jersey. Have you heard that? Yeah, I did. It's something about the lease is up, and you know, I don't think they want to renew the lease. Or it's um, a big, want, they, it's they a kick, big piece yeah. of prime real estate. Big piece yeah. of prime real estate in New York City, man. That's a lot of footage that goes unused ninety percent of the time, ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah, absolutely. So it's it, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Besides, you know, across, have, across the street, they got the famed Hotel Pennsylvania. You ever been there? Mm -hmm. Have um, you? No, I've seen it. I've not been there. No, Let me I tell you about this place, okay? I've been to China, and I've been to Hong Kong, I've been to Japan, all these places where they have small hotel rooms, right? They must have built this hotel room at the Penta for a midget. I'm telling you, because, <laughs> you, I mean, you, it, I, I'm not trying to say I hit the ceiling at five foot nine, but it was close. And we were so <laughs> tight in there, it was like one twin bed. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, HBO set me up with this room, right? So I said to myself, you know, shut up. You're being, your room's being paid for by HBO in New York City. Just shut the duck up and go, right? And then I get there, and it's like two phone booths. Oh, my God. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. Well, that's kind of like um, how apartments are, 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 are here in New York City as well. And the rent is like $3,000 for like a studio. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> here's what's up. It looks like New York City is going to start jumping, though. I think the Barclays Center is going to start putting some money in boxing, and and because I think the Garden is going to be out. I think maybe you know if they're going to move it as far as um uh, location is concerned, they're going to move it to another. Like, what are they talking about? New Jersey for the Knicks? I, I have no idea because you, it's not only the the Knicks. You have um, the Rangers. You know, the the Rangers play there. 
you know, and they have other events there as well. I mean, it'd be interesting. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't see how they do that. But. Does hockey, does hockey draw well? Oh, the Rangers draw well. The, yeah. There's a lot of, you know, Rangers are big time here. You know, especially when they play like the Islanders or, the, or New Jersey Devils. Those are big rivalries. Okay. You know, I was talking a little bit earlier, and, and I want to drop this. I am so high on Cianessa Sestrade. It's unbelievable. She's 25 and 0 with nine knockouts, but she fights at 105 pounds. That's a major, major disadvantage because of the fact that not a whole lot of people can fight at 105 pounds. But the Chucasta Valley, 30 and 2 uh, out of Nicaragua, she can fight a little bit, 30 and 2 with nine kills. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, women's boxing needs good fights. This is a good fight. Yes. These two chicks can punch a little bit. I mean, nine knockouts each. That's a whole lot more than a lot of girls. I think, I think Clarissa Shields, what she go, 12-0 and 0 or with no knockouts? Something like that. Or yeah. like two knockouts or something. Yeah. Yeah. You gave her, who's she knock out? You and me? <laughs> Probably. I didn't want to admit to that. But. Okay, soft touch. Jack, we stepped in the last minute with Clarissa Shields and got whipped in a transgender fight. Anyway, there's no rumor, to, there's no merit to the rumor that Canelo's going to fight um, a cross gender fight in May, is there? <laughs> Not that I know of. I mean, he's looking for an easy mark. I'll talk about it. I mean, he, he just, uh, he just, anyway, we'll get to that a little bit later. Bottom line is, boxing right now was, it was a bit of a, a, of a light weekend. Of course, you got the heavyweight fight with, um, with Joshua and of course, um, Mr. I think Francis Ngannou's got a live shot here, man. And Francis Ngannou hits him on the chin. I mean, I think Tyson Fury's got a better chin than than than, jo- than uh, Anthony Joshua does. I, I agree with that. No, that, that that that's a fair point. And it is heavyweight boxing, and it only takes one shot to change the whole fight. But no, definitely. I, 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 I do. <clears throat> Well, I think we lost Tommy D again. Let's try to get him one more. This is, this is going to be one of them shows, folks. There's no doubt about it. When everything just goes wrong as far as the uh, the tech, technical stuff is concerned. But it happens. You know, this is worth working, of course, with Internet and things like that. When you have Internet here in the talk of uh, the Sports Byline Broadcast Network, sometimes uh, uh, resembles dial-up. I kid you not. Remember the dial-up? When you say, and make that noise when you dial up the Internet. Bottom line is that's what this sounds like a lot of times. Of course, the Devin Haney... <clears throat> Ryan Garcia fight April the 20th in the uh, Barclays Center, it looks like. 31 and zip, 15 KOs. Of course, we'll talk about the defending champion, Devin Haney out of San Francisco, a former champion at 135, now at 140, of course, the WBC 140-pound champion, having shut out Rage's Progress in a fight a few months ago here in San Francisco, of course. And the opposition, Ryan Garcia, 24 and 1. The Golden Boy, maybe not so much. Uh, you know, I mean, come on. He had a good chance to become really a superstar, but you know, he failed miserably against Javante Davis. He just did last April. Of course, he either went in there hurt or or came in or, or or lay down like a dog. Now, bottom line is, let's take it back to Tommy D one more time before we go to a break. Tommy D, you there? Yes, sir. Are you are you not paying the internet back there, or is it us? Because we got the dial-up internet here. You know, you know what dial-up is. <laughs> Yes, I do. That. Yeah, we got the hey, the, the gifted ones laughing in the other one, but you know, no, it is it's dial-up. Yeah, it's it's weird. I mean, I never had this problems before. I'm I'm at home, so and usually it's pretty good. But yeah. I, but, it's, it's, so, so, so do you pay for your Wi-Fi? Yes, I do. I, okay, I, just I, checking I, on you. Just checking on you. Know, because I know you guys from New York. I called Steve Albert one night, the Showtime boxing analyst, and he was watching two different pay-per-view fights on two different channels. And then I got him the cop to the fact he had a free box. He sort of freaked out on the air when he realized that he. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said, "How are you doing that?" I said, "Are you paying for those both those pay-per-view shows?" He goes, "No, no, I'm not paying for them." I said, "So you got a hot box?" And he's sitting there like, "Pause." Uh, uh, no other way you could do it, man. You're watching both fights for free. Anyway, that was Steve Albert. You are tuned to Ring Talk Live Worldwide. We got it together. We'll be back with Tommy D after the break. Or Sir Thomas Dillamuth. Now more of Ring Talk with Pedro Fernandez. You know, he went on the road to beat Vladimir Klitschko in a fight. He was a 6-1 to underdog. Here he is on the road against... Deontay Wilder looking for all the world like he's pulling another upset. There's a right cross that lands for Fury. Oh, there it goes! Look, Fury! Mamma mia! Deontay Wilder has done it! Knocking down Fury about 12. He's up. Can you continue? Wow, he got up. You want to go? Look over there, come back to me. Incredible turn of events here in the 12th. Incredible as it was, of course, Tyson Fury got up. I thought he was like the Undertaker in some WWE event, of course, but he got up and went on with Deontay Wilder. Speaking of Wilder, of course, the 2008 Olympic bronze medal will bring back in Tommy D from the 
the shot caller from the Bronx, of course. Wilder says he's rededicated to boxing. It's, it's a little bit late. The guy's long in the tooth, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, he's, he's doesn't seem, you know, all that focused. I mean, you, you can only take a man for his word for, you know, for so long, you know, not so, in boxing. He, yeah. And, and in boxing, exactly. You know, it's, it's a dangerous sport. So I, I don't know. I don't know what he does next. Who does he fight next? You know, I mean, you know, he's, he's not going to fight a cupcake. He's going to fight a top guy. You know, he could end up getting hurt in that in the Parker fight. He's, he, he was lucky, you know, Parker couldn't finish him, but he took a lot of bad shots in that fight. That'd be a good rematch. It would if Parker was to lose to um to Zhang. You know, mm. I, I expect if, if Parker beats Zhang, I expect Parker probably get a shot, you know, another shot at the title probably. That, of course, that's going on February to, as well. Zil Zhang, of course, uh, the once beaten uh, Chinese national heavyweight. Um, that, That's a pick em fight, I think, those two guys, Parker and, and Zhang. Yeah, I think it's a pick em fight. I mean, because just because Parker's been on a little bit of a roll lately, but, you know, Zhang, I mean, his latest two wins against Joyce were pretty, you know, pretty sick knockouts, especially the second one. So he's flying high and, you know, he's got to step on the gas now. He's 40 years old. So he needs to, you know, uh, make an impact and, and make a statement so he can get a title shot. And maybe, who knows, maybe they get a title, maybe they get a big title fight in China. That's, that'd be huge. That, that would, I mean, <clears throat> <clears throat> having televised the first and second professional boxing cards in all of China. I'm talking about, of course, the first card in 1993, the brawl at the wall with Leonzo Barber in a WB 175 pound title fight. And of course we went back to Macau one year later, that was a bit of a disaster and a non-title affair. But the bottom line is we had some good times in, in, in China, but we sort of like, when we, when we did this the first time, we said, you know, we had the first boxing card since 1949 and the takeover of Mao Zedong and the communists, this and that. So it was a new new pitch. And we took Ali over there, and we drove him around this and that, and he shook hands with people. They knew who he was. I told you all over the world. But the bottom line is, that was one hell of an event. Now, if we were to hold a heavyweight title fight in Beijing, I think we could sell out maybe, they could sell 100,000 seats. Oh, big time. It, it, without a doubt. Easy. You know? you know, I mean, they need to build a, they need to start building the outdoor arena now. Yeah, I mean, but, but well, here's what's I mean, up. But it's a pick and fight. You know, got, you, you, s- win. you said that Parker was on a roll. Parker had a roll. That was a problem with Parker. I think there for a while was he had a roll. You know what I mean? He was a little heavy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these heavyweights they come in a little bit, you know, soft in the middle. I mean, but look at Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury's still undefeated, and you know he doesn't have the best. Uh... Wait, 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 wait. If you're undefe- <laughs> still undefeated, do you put an asterisk next to that? Oh, definitely an asterisk next to that. You know, because of the Nganu fight, you know, even even that that first Wilder fight, you know, I, I was surprised that that Reese didn't stop the fight as soon as he went down. Jack, I've seen, talking about Jack Reese, the California based referee. Yeah, I was shocked that he didn't stop it. He gave him a chance. And, um, you know, I thought the count was a little bit. Yeah. But credit to him, he got up and finished the fight. So. That looked like some WWE type of thing with the Undertaker, <laughs> like him getting out of a casket or something like that. Whoa. Yeah, I mean, the way he fell down, he hit the back of his head on the, on the canvas, it, it, I thought it was over, you know? And, and obviously the announcers did too. They were shocked. This team just pop up like The Undertaker. Okay. Frank Martin, have any, have any, uh, have any chance against Javante Davis? Sure, I believe he has a big chance. I you mean, do it. Um, uh, ba- time out, time out, time out. Time out, Tommy D. You're only as good as your last fight, right? Didn't, didn't, yes. uh, didn't Martin have to, like, do something dramatic in the 12th round in order to win? Uh, did he drop him in the last yeah, round? Yeah, the last he, round. Didn't look, he didn't look. He didn't look all too great, but um, you know, he's still a solid guy. He might be one of the better guys that that Tank has fought in, in his career. I mean, if you look at Tank's resume, you know, who has Tank really fought that's solid? Rolly Romero, you know, Ryan Garcia. Hey, don't be disparaging <laughs> Rolly around here. Rolly's king in this house. <laughs> you know, so I, I mean, I, I, I give I give Frank. Uh, a, a chance, you know, in this fight. Okay, it, it'd be interesting. It's it's very intriguing, you know, to see Tank mm-hmm. finally fight somebody that can move and box, and you know, um, he doesn't have the same power as Tank does, but he has some pop in his punches. So, I mean, really impressed when he beat Michelle Rivera uh, a couple years ago, and, and and Rivera was juiced in that fight as well. So, you know, and he dominated that fight. So, I was really impressed by Frank Martin, especially in that that fight with uh, Michelle Rivera. Okay. 
As far as the heavyweight division is concerned, of course, it's it's a bit of a, a, a doldrum. We'll figure out what's going to happen as far as Tyson Fury's future is concerned with uh, Usyk. Of course, that's going to go down when in April or May. But the bottom line is that cut was pretty nasty. How did that? Now, I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you sure that cut happened on that elbow? Is that what happened? But they sparred some more after the cut. I, I, I It looks like it was an elbow. Whether or not the cut was there before or after the elbow, that is that is the question with the headgear. But it definitely an elbow did land. But but from you, my, but from you feel me on that. But he sparred with another guy after that. Well, that I did. I didn't know that. I mean that that's the way it looked as far as the videos were concerned. But anyway, it's still confusing. There's no doubt about it. Of course, it, is, it looked like it was it was videotaped with like an old Nokia or something so, so all right mean, so the wbc has the wbc has mandated david benavidez uh come march the, the mandatory contender for canelo alvarez and canelo got all freaked out thought he was me had to fight him in may they're talking about probably doing this in 2024 being the mandatory ain't it about time it, it, yeah it's way overdue you know and, and um and i think he still avoids him i still think we're not going to see that fight i think canelo's going to you know do another you know he's, he's going to relinquish the title He's going to or relinquish the title, you know, but it's about time that 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 the WBC Suleiman has, has done something. I mean, he's been a mandatory for a while and this is the fight that people want to see. I mean, why wouldn't you, you know, mandate that earlier, you know? OK, Arthur Bidavev and of course, and Dimitri Bivol are going to go down. Of course, that's going to be in Saudi Arabia as well. Saudi Arabia, if, if you know, if we can get some good New York, New York promoters, I think we can like you know, compete as far as some of the money with Saudi, with Saudi Arabia, because Saudi Arabia is, is gobbling up all the big fights. And, of course, this Haney and uh, Ryan Garcia fight is a major fight. You know, I think that's going to sell out easily. I think it does sell out easily. Um, I think a lot of people, and, you know, another thing about it, it, the East Coast is where all the other good 140 fighters are. So you're going to you're going to have some people in attendance too. other fighters. You know, you, you know, Teofimo will probably make appearance. Uh, Sunny East Coast, uh, uh, Shakur Stevenson, another guy in in, in those weights, you know, rival. So, you know, I, I think it's going to be a big event. Um, I'm definitely going to try to, you know, attend and try to get a ticket and go to. Um, okay. You know, I just hope that the undercard is, is going to be pretty stacked as well. Make so sure that's, you that's, make sure you apply for credentials on Tuesday. Uh, this Tuesday. Well, this Tuesday, I don't know if that. Uh, I, I'm still trying to look for it. I know you can apply to go to the press conference uh, in the Palladium, but I can't make that. I got to work on Tuesday. So no, no, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say to make sure you apply for credentials. I think I'll open them up on Tuesday. On uh, Tuesday, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm gonna look into that. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So, but I doubt. I, I it's gonna be tough, and I'm sure all the big name press is gonna be there. I mean, yeah. it's gonna be a great. I think it's gonna be a great event. It's a big fight. Okay, and of course it, it's it's two two West Coasters, two West Coast guys fighting on the East Coast. It will sell out, and of course it will do well on pay per view because of the fact that Ryan Garcia is involved, right? Yes, I, yeah, especially because Ryan Garcia is involved. He has a big fan base, and um, you know Haney, this would be his third. This would be his third pay per view, I, I believe. Um, I I don't know if they announced if it's going to be pay per view. I'm assuming his third his, wait, his third pay per view. Didn't he didn't he set a record with that second pay per view? The second pay per view, yeah, against um, Regis Pro Grace, with as far as like uh, Regis landing it. Uh, no, 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 no. It did a pay per view record, fifty thousand homes. No fights ever done that, done those kind of numbers ever. Really? Uh, think about that. Only out of three hundred seventy million people, only fifty thousand people decided to watch that fight, a world championship fight with Devin Haney being the former lightweight champion. Think about that. That's uh, that's but that, a lot of pay per views are not selling. You know, as well. I mean, 50,000 homes on, that, on the Saudi Arabia card. It was the Saudi Arabia, the Saudi Arabian card. Of course, a lot the, the Russian, the Russians took over that one. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when I say the Russians, you know what I mean by that? No, I don't. Because the Russians don't. put it up on their websites and then you can watch it for free. Anyway, stick yeah. around after the break, Tommy D. You are tuned to Ring Talk Live Worldwide. <laughs> Check it. Your inside look at the world of boxing. Going to try to regroup during the break, folks. This is uh, your longest running fight show in history. Ring Talk Live Worldwide. The gifted one. I'm talking about the impeccable one. He's on the other side of the glass today. You are tuned to Ring Talk. Now more of Ring Talk with Pedro Fernandez. I saw a picture of you in the in the paper um, two days ago. I think it was cornered by a group of uh, fans, mainly women. 
I don't pay no attention to it. I don't, I don't consider myself a more attractive man. Well, whether you want it or not, you are. I mean, people for years have been saying you're one of the most attractive men in the world. I know that. I was just... <laughs> I don't pay no attention. I just try to stay halfway decent looking when boxing's a rough sport and get hit a lot. And right after the fights, I run right to the dressing room and right to the mirror and I <laughs> check to make sure I'm still, you know, presentable. It's a rough sport being pounded on all the time. A lot of people's features change. Mm. Mm. Mainly when I fight them. <laughs> My man. The greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, no doubt about that. Now to the second greatest of all time, of course, he's on the line from the Bronx talking about the shot caller for Sunday, Mr. Thomas Dulamuth, Sir Thomas Dulamuth, the king, call him what you want, bottom line is he calls the shots. Tim Zhu is going to be taking on, uh, uh, not the greatest fighter in the entire world, but I looked at his record and I was like shocked, shocked that, that, um, that Keith Thurman's really only lost one fight. I thought he lost more than one fight. He's like you know, 30 and one. Yeah, he's he he he, and his only loss was to uh in a close fight against Pacquiao in a fight that he got dropped. Um, you know, Keith Thurman, Thurman is serviceable. He's, he's a good fighter. He's been he's been lucky that guys couldn't finish him though because he's been hurt a few times, especially to the body. Um, the the known one to me was the Colazzo fight, which which was a very weird ending when Colazzo hurt him to the body, and um. At the end of the round, you know, he, he he gave him, he was trying to give Colazzo like a high five, like, yeah, you got me. And he was like, no. And then in the very next round, I think Thurman stopped him. It was very weird. Like Colazzo kind of like quit or something. It was a very weird ending. But the bottom line is, is that, you know, um, Thurman, Thurman has been hurt fairly to the body, but he's, he's fairly good. I, I, I like Thurman, um, but this is first fight at 154. It'd be pretty interesting to see how he does mm-hmm. against the guy that's going to come forward and, and Tim Zhu, who's looked phenomenal in 2023. So I, I guess the big question is here: Can can he catch at one fifty four? Yeah, can he? I mean, and, no, and no, Thurman, no. I'm talking about Keith Thurman. Can he catch at one fifty four? Can he? Can he take the shots at one fifty four? If you step up away, believe me, I stepped from junior welterweight to welterweight, and I ran back to junior welterweight faster than you can imagine after getting getting uh, exposed. I put it this way. The raw power of guys moving up in weight. I mean, people laugh about it. Just move up. It's only four pounds, five pounds, seven pounds. I couldn't believe the difference between 139 and 147 pounds. Tommy D was like light years. Hmm. No, and, and that's going to be the thing. If he can take um, Zoo's punches, I think he can outbox Zoo. Um, he's not going to stop Tim Zoo because he he hasn't stopped anybody in years. You know, at one four at wealth weight at 147. So, but I believe he's got he's got good enough skill to outbox him. But for how long can he? You know stay away from Tim Zhu's power. So it'll be interesting. I think Tim Zhu, I, I see Tim Zhu winning in the late rounds and stopping him maybe in like the ninth or 10th round. So, okay. I, if, I just don't understand why it's pay-per-view. You mentioned body, you mentioned body shots a little bit earlier. Oh, like Usyk doesn't take well to the body. It wouldn't benefit Tyson Fury just to work on that body all day. Wouldn't it? It would, and, but he doesn't really go to the body much. So it'd be very interesting to see how Fury attacks uh, Usyk. Can you teach an old dog new tricks? I mean, Tyson Fury is an old dog now, and let's be honest, he doesn't look like he wants to. He doesn't look like he's in the learning mode anymore. No, I, I not especially with him, you know. And and, and it, you know, we, you've spoken about gypsies before and how how they are, but um, his attitude. Oh oh oh! Now look, you're gonna get me in trouble here. You're gonna get me in <laughs> trouble here, saying that I may, I said racial things about gypsy. I didn't say nothing racial. I, what I said was. I didn't, I didn't as, say you said it was racial. No, what I, I said, said no, no. I'm gonna cut you off before before you get me in trouble. What I said was, as a policeman, I never encountered an honest gypsy. As a human being, I never encountered an honest gypsy. Yeah. Okay. Ever. But that's not racial. That's just you know, that's your experience. That's life experience. No, I know. But you, you, I, I think you were gonna put me on the spot there, so I, I had to jump. I had to jump out there. I told you about the psychic that hired me to watch you as a psychic, right? Yeah, that was that was hysterical. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't believe it. I got I got like one hundred and ten dollars an hour to sit there and watch, watch sit in front of some lady's house, sit in front of some some office on Hate Street and take pictures. Yeah, and during the pandemic when nobody was going, <laughs> I mean, it was like me and my cup of coffee. That was about it. Anyway, back to the heavyweight title fight. Does Us- Usyk have any chance? Is Usyk just a small guy that's going to get l- drilled by a bigger guy? I th- no, I, I don't think so. I think Usyk has a chance. You know, Tyson struggles with guys smaller than him. You know, that can move a little bit. He's not, you know. And Usyk's pretty durable, and he can move, and, and and he can box a little bit. I think I think it's going to be a competitive fight. 
Um, it, and I think it all depends on on what Tyson Fury we get too, because Tyson Fury, you know, he's a wild card. He does what he wants. He, he trains the way he wants to train. You know, he's not an honest man either. You know, he's been accused of cheating. I mean, I, okay, you know. hold on, hold on a second, Tommy D. Latest coming in from south of the border, of course, on Canel Alvarez. Let's go. I am the Frito Bandido. I like Frito Scorn Chips. I love them. I do. I want Frito Scorn Canelo Alvarez sponsoring Frito Corn Chips. Now, what do you think? <laughs> I have no comment. I can't do, even do you have, Do you have any idea who the Frito Bandido is? No, I, I do See, that's, I knew that was before your time. He was like the spokesperson for Frito, Frito's Corn Chips. Oh, okay. Okay. And he was he 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 was a well stocked Mexican guy, obviously doing that. Mm. You know, and, and I think that and to an extent Canelo's become like the Frito Bandito. He wants to steal money now. Listen, he wants to charge us for a fight here in the United States against the impeccable in the other room. Now I understand that he's a possible opponent May the fourth. They want to charge us pay per view in the United States for him to fight Bailey Peck. Okay, but 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 and people in Mexico get to watch that fight for free. What kind of crap is that? That's crazy. And then, you know, he doesn't want to fight Mexican uh, Mexican descent fighters. Because, that's why you know, he's, that's why he's fighting Peck. Yeah, he's, he's fighting. That's, about, why, he's about, fighting, about, that's why he's fighting. That's why he wants to take on Bailey. Bailey's not okay. making Bailey's a non Mexican guy. Jaime Mugia, they have evidently they offered him like 30 million bucks. 30 million, that's what it reported. 30, I mean, Jaime Mugia, 30 million dollars. I should have got a piece of that guy a long time ago. Wow. And and, and Mungi, is Mungi going to take it? Because I don't think you can refuse that. No, and I think we have up. They they were going to offer Charlo some money. They couldn't offer Charlo that type of a guarantee because Charlo's not going to bring anything. The 160 mile Charlo brings nothing to the pay per view dance. No, absolutely nothing. Especially in uh, and especially what he's been going through the last few years. I wouldn't want to pay a penny to see that. Okay, but you know? but Mungi, of course, coming coming off an impressive win over John Ryder. I mean, and he's undefeated now, 43 and 0. And of course, he hasn't. I said he's fought a lot of cab drivers. Basically, he's learned on the job. He had a limited amateur career. But he's exciting when you watch him fight, man. No, he is. And I think stylistically, this it would be a great fight. I don't think he has a chance to beat Canelo. I, I mean, I don't think, you know, I don't think he doesn't really have knockout, like one punch knockout power. You know, and Canelo, Canelo's jaw, his beard is, is iron. So I, I don't. You know, but I think stylistically it would be a good entertaining fight, but, you know, he, I don't think he has a chance to beat Canelo at but all. But if his chin is so iron, then he's stepping against, um, you know, David Benavidez right away. The WB says that's a mandatory. Then he, he starts freaking out this week, jumping up and down. Oh, no, no, no. And they go, oh, we didn't mean for May, but we meant for 2024. And so now they're sort of backtracking on it. I think yeah. he's going to relinquish the title or retire or pull some. I know he won't retire. He's too greedy, okay? But he's going to relinquish the title and fight Bailey Peck four or five times. <laughs> Four or five times while she's going to get a trilogy and one. Well, and, you know, I'm telling you, that's, that's, well, that's the, that's the one guy he could beat right now. Uh, I mean, he could, he could fight me. You know, I, I'll take a little bit. I'll take, you know. Yeah, I'll but take, could you, but could you make, here's what's up. Could you make 168? Huh? Yeah, uh, wait, uh, uh, uh wait, it was, wait, no, no, other. Uh, that wasn't, that, that was, it's a yes or a no. No, nah, I don't think I can make one. Not even a catchweight. Oh, so. not even a catchweight. I guess we'll have to get soccer involved. Speaking of Socrates, of course, um, you know, he was complaining last week that the fights were on late in New York City. New York City is sort of like got dissed a little bit as far as TV was concerned. You know, because HBO used to try to have the fights on before uh, midnight because, you know, Seth Abraham and his people, they lived in New York City. He was a HBO CEO when it came to sports. So he wanted to air fights at a decent hour on the East Coast. That's sort of like, that's like out the window now. Yeah, that's great. But I think he was more he was more upset with that Thursday night fight. I don't think he was upset with last week because he was there in, in attendance. But I think he was the week before the Thursday night in Vegas, the Teofimo fight. I think he was a bit upset at that. I mean, he was happy with the outcome because he wanted Teofimo to win, but he wasn't so happy with the time, you know. And then he he did have to go to work early in the next morning. So okay, speaking of Teofimo, um, what's in his what's in his future? And is there is there any stardom left in him or is he all burnt out i i i do not know the guy is so weird and and he's just does he do drugs know, i i i don't think so i, think, I mean I think hold on if, 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 if he you know you do an interview with him and he goes and he sort of figures things out you know what i mean yeah I, that kind of self-explains everything 
But I, I don't think so. I just think he's just, you know, he just speaks, he speaks out of his, you know, where, and, you know, he says things that he shouldn't be saying. He says a lot of ignorance um, things right now, from what I hear, he wants to have a fight in Honduras. He wants to fight there. Uh, a couple guys he could fight. I don't, I mean, he should rematch Sandor Martin. I don't think that's going to happen. There's Barboza, you know, and he's only going to fight somebody in top rank. Keyshawn Davis is calling for the fight, which would be a step up and wait for him. So, I'm not sure what they want to do with T.O. Um, if I had to guess, you know, they might put him in June or July and, okay. and give him a home fight. And, there, are, and there are currently two pound-for-pound kings, I think, on boxing right now, Terrence Crawford and Noah Inouye. Of course, what's up with Crawford, man? I have, is he gonna, do I need to put him on the side of milk cartons pretty soon or what? That, that's, that's a good question. I, I wonder what he's going to do next, too. I mean, is he stay at 147 and, and you know, defend one of the titles because they stripped him of the IBF? You know, there's boots there. Or does he go to 154 and, and, and challenge himself? I no, mean, wait a second. A the International people... Boxing Federation stripped him, and they give the, the you know, the, the International Boxing Federation, back in the day, the IBF, you know what it was called off the cuff? No. The International Black Federation. <laughs> because they favored, they favored black, for they, they obviously, I mean, they favor black fighters. There's no doubt about it. I mean, over the years, they just do, okay? So that's why I brought that up. Anyway, bottom line is, of course, I think Curtis Peoples is now the president. But Bob Lee at one point in time, when Bob Lee was president of the IBF, I walked up to him at the Von Bean Vander Holyfield fight in Atlanta. And I said to him, you know what, uh, Bob, I need to talk to you. He goes, talk to me here. I said, not in front of people, Bob. I said, this is personal. He goes, talk to me here. They can listen to anything you say. I said, okay. The FBI's got videotape, and I saw you taking money from Doug Beavers in a bribe. Wow. Yeah, so Bob Lee popped two nitroglycerin pills right there. Didn't say a word. Didn't say nothing. I said, you want me to keep talking? Bottom line is, he, he, he didn't believe me. And at first, but then he realized, yeah, I did take money from Doug Beavers, and there was a television in front of him. They put the camera, the FBI put a camera in the TV. So Bob Lee, the president of the International Boxing Federation, the founder, went to prison for corruption. Wow. And he spent like three or four years in there. And he, got, he never snitched on Don King. He never snitched on Bob Barham. He never snitched on the fat man, Cedric Kushner. Of course, all these secret tapes were recorded by Doug Weaver's Fuzzy Wuzzy was Don King, and the fat man was Cedric Kushner. Cedric Kushner, of course, before he had that stomach stapling job, was 450 pounds. Wow. May he rest in peace. Yeah. The penguin. Wait, well, hey, one morning, one more. I'll let you go with this in the Cedric Christian one. One morning, we're in uh, by, Minot, North Dakota. We got done with the Virgil Hill fight the night before, and we're in the uh, in the airport. And Cedric's hungry, so Cedric ends up bribing some dude. He gave some dude a hundred bucks to go in there and pop the lock on the ice cream in the ice cream store uh, in the airport, and he got a half a gallon of ice cream before we got on the plane. <laughs> hey, man. I mean, yeah, I gave, I, he told the guy, I want some ice cream. He goes, it's closed. He goes, I want some ice cream. It was closed. He goes, if I give you a hundred bucks, will you go get it for me? And the guy says, give it to me. And he gave him the hundred bucks. And that was the end of that. Good old Cedric Cushion. May he rest in peace. You are tuned to Ring Talk Live Worldwide. Tommy D, it's been an abortion of a show, but I thank you for everything. Oh, man, I appreciate you, Pedro. Take care. All the best. Say hello to you. Hey, how's that electric toothbrush working? It's looking good. My wife has been using it. I have to get one, you know, uh, to put in for myself. But get, get the, oh, I, you just get it. It's called like a oral B40 head, something like that. Bottom line is have a great week. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> you are doing a ring talk live worldwide. Now more of ring talk with Pedro Fernandez. And if we cannot end now our differences, at least we can help make the world safe for diversity. For in the final analysis, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's futures. And we are all mortal. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, 35th president of the United States, talking about, you know, we all breathe the same air. We all drink the same water. Bottom line is we need to keep this planet together. Of course, it has some harmony. Of course, now we're like back in the days when the 60s, of course, when Russia and the United States almost were at Cold War with each other. And the bottom line is, of course, Russia is like the unknown, the the silent enemy because of one political party here in the country. But the bottom line is the Russians want to decimate us. There's no doubt about it. If you look at U.S. history, they don't teach U.S. history in high school anymore. They do in Marin County. 
okay? But they don't teach, and in certain exclusive places, they still teach U.S. history. But for the most part, it's not a requirement in high school anymore. So people don't know about the Holocaust. People don't know about things because U.S. history or world history is just not taught anymore. And if you don't learn history, you're doomed to repeat it. Straight up, this is Ring Talk Live Worldwide. Hour number two of Ring Talk uh, Live Worldwide will take us back in time. We're going to talk about, of course, the 1997 fight between Ike Bayabuchi, of course, the undefeated Nigerian nightmare. No doubt about that. A heavyweight sensation. 16-0 at the time, 12 knockouts, taking on David Tua. He was also undefeated at that point in time. Of course, David Tua, the throwing Samoan. Wow, what a fight that was. Over 1,200 punches thrown in a 12-round fight between two heavyweights. Bottom line is, we'll go back in time with that. And 1995 on this same date. February 25th, 1995, Nigel Ben and Jerome McClellan hooked it up. Of course, that was a tragic event that took place in London. We'll talk about that in depth with Lisa McClellan, the sister, the saved. The, she, 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 hey, without Gerald, I mean, without her, Gerald would like probably be in an old folks home or something like that. Bottom line, she really takes care of her brother. So we'll hear from her as far as Gerald McClellan and his current status is concerned in hour number two. Coming up after racist, after the racist, biased. Un- unbelievable news. I and mean, you can't believe this news. So for six minutes, go somewhere else, please, and come back in six minutes. This is Ring Talk Live Worldwide. The impeccable one, take it away. <laughs> 